But one of the things that we always need to remind ourselves of is what is the goal of soul winning? What's the goal? What's the end game? Well, the goal is to get people saved. That's our goal. And you'll probably do pretty well as long as we keep that in mind. When we go out to a door, what is the purpose? We want people to get saved. It isn't just, it isn't, we're not going out with the sole purpose of recruiting people to church. Now, it would be a good thing for people to come to church. I wouldn't be upset if people came to church, but that's not the goal of why we go out at a soul winning time. It's to win souls to Christ. So keep that in mind as we go through these things. Now, the first thing that we do, and I'm always going to try to do this, and I think we have successfully, but if there's a time where it doesn't happen, is we want to start off our soul winning with prayer. And you cannot pray enough. And I won't, and, and you know, I'll stress that, that even though, you know, because oftentimes we're sending people out because we have so many groups, we might go to different areas and stuff. I like to have a group prayer here we're all involved with because we know that in our own flesh, of our own ability, of our own talents, we can do nothing. We need to be yoking up and working with the Holy Spirit in order for people's souls to get saved. We're just a vessel. You know, we didn't die for these people. Jesus Christ did. Now, don't get me the wrong way. I don't, I, I still believe it's completely biblical in the terminology of, you know, we got somebody saved or I got this person saved. There's nothing wrong with that language. We see the Apostle Paul uses that language quite frequently. You know, become all things, all men. That might by all means save some. He's talking about winning their souls to Christ. And, and over and over, I could go through, I'm not even going to go into all the scripture that just shows that that is totally a biblical concept to say that. But that being said, we also know and believe fully that Jesus Christ is the Savior. He's the one who, who paid for all the sins and we can do nothing without him. So we go out, we work, we want the Holy Spirit, we want Jesus with us, we want the, the, the blessing of God upon us, so we are going to pray every time and you know sometimes even though you pray once before we go you can pray with your partner before you get started on those doors and i've even prayed just stopped in the middle of sewing sewing's not going that well you know what i'm just gonna get on my knees and pray or just stop here and pray and we're just gonna pray god you know like things aren't going real well god god lead us somewhere lead it you know have someone cross our path or whatever because look it, that is totally according to God's will. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if you're there bringing the information and you've got the word of God and you're there to, to show people why they need to repent, why they need to change their mind and put their faith in Jesus Christ, then there's no reason why God's not going to answer that prayer as much as he will. I mean, the only thing that God won't do is he can't decide for somebody and make people believe. But he could give them great opportunities. So we pray. Praying is number one. I don't think I'm going to get any objections to that on how we do things here. Yes, we're going to be praying to God every time. The second point, we started off here in Mark chapter 6. And these are in no particular order. Okay, just I wrote down a bunch of different things on, on how we practice soul winning and what we do here. Um, just to try to explain every point. In Mark chapter 6, we see Jesus Christ sending out the twelve. In verse number seven, it says, and he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two. And it goes on, it says, gave them power of unclean spirits and commanded them they should take nothing for the journey. And it goes on and on. But the point that we see here, the, the example that we have in Scripture, we don't have a command that says you must go soul winning with a soul winning partner. And this is the way that God says it has to be done. We don't see that as a command in Scripture. But we see an example of Jesus Christ sending out his disciples in pairs, in pairs of two. And we can see a lot of good and, and understand a lot of good reasons as to why this is a good idea to have two. But it's not a hard, fast rule. Now, when we make groups here, we are going to be sending people forth by two and two in general as the example set forth to follow. It's a good example. That's what Jesus did. If it's good enough for him to, to send his disciples out that way, then that's what we, we're going to do it. But there's obviously going to be some times, what do you do when you have an odd number of people? Well, you just can't go soul winning then. No. It, that's why it's not some hard, fast rule. It's not, it's not some hard, fast thing. So I'm very flexible with that. I mean, I'm used to going out soul winning by myself for quite a bit. And, and you know what? Many of you probably have too. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I'm not saying not to go out soul winning. If you don't have a partner, if you have no one else to go with, to go out just, I mean, hey, knock on doors, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing. But ideally, what we're going to try to do is pair people up. And I'm not going to go into the, all of the reasons why having a silent partner is important, but it is. That's kind of a sermon for another day in and of itself. Uh, just real briefly, having two people there is great for um, being able to stop distractions. You're going to be a lot more effective having someone else there kind of praying that, that God's going to open up the heart of the person that, that the other one's talking to. Um, there's so many different situations can come up. Maybe one of you knows how to speak another language, the other one doesn't. There's a lot of different reasons why you can have uh, a benefit to having two people. But even without understanding all those reasons, we see that Jesus did it. It's a good example. It's a biblical example. It's something that we do here. It's something we practice here. Now, when I pair people up, the goal also in what we're doing here is try to get people that don't know how to give the gospel, they're not comfortable with it, an opportunity to be able to give the gospel to somebody. So we start off by pairing people into groups of, well, hey, if you're comfortable doing this, you know how to do it, we're going to match you up with someone who doesn't know how to give the gospel so that they can learn firsthand. Hands-on experience is the best experience to have. You, can, you, you learn so much by doing, oftentimes, than just studying. So if there's anyone, I don't know if there's anyone here tonight that doesn't do the talking yet, but, um, you know, don't wait to get started doing the talking would be my advice. You don't have to memorize and just study, 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 study. Now, hey, studying is great. Study the Bible. But don't let that hold you back from actually doing the talking. Because we need to, uh, you know, the, you're going to learn so much more by doing I know for the longest time I was Pastor Anderson's silent partner. And that was a little intimidating, and, and I remember it. Because I, I didn't want to do the talking. And, I, and more importantly, though, I didn't want to screw things up. It's him and I going out soul winning, and I'm just like, you know what? If I try to do this, I'm not nearly as good at explaining as he is. I'm just going to let him do it. He could do the talking because, you know, every time I'm thinking, well, I want this person to get saved. That's why we're going out soul winning. The problem with that mentality, though, is that then I'm never going to be a talker. I'm never going to do it. And then what's going to happen when someone else shows up or when Pastor Anderson isn't there or anything? You know, I can't just rely on someone else. It's way more valuable. It's way more valuable in the long run to do, start doing the talking right away, even if someone else can do a better job than you. That doesn't matter. You start getting that experience. You start making, instead of just having one person able to give the gospel, two, three, four, you start adding those numbers up, you're going to be that much more effective and end up doing that much more. I mean, do you, do you think I'm still thinking the same way if I were to go out solely with Pastor Anderson that I'd be like, well, I shouldn't do any of the talking because, I mean, he's just way better than I am at it. And, and there's like, I would, I would just don't think that, that I can get someone saved. I, I just want him to do it. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. Of course not. And I don't feel about that w way with anybody here that, you know, that, that I've been with that I know I just do, do a good job out soul winning. Like, I wouldn't feel like, um, I wouldn't feel any problem saying, no, you do the talking. Right? You just, just switch because you're a soul winner. It's, it's not that, you know, ultimately, I mean, it's a big deal someone's soul, but it's not, it's not like it's, um, any one person has to do it. 